So you're finally upgrading to a mining barge. But which one out of the three should you be flying? Let's have a look at the Retriever and see if it's the right ship for you. Hello there and welcome back, it's Garter from Garter Snipe Gaming and today we're going to have a quick look over at the Retriever. I'm going to go over a couple of basic fits, uh, we're going to do a basic overview of the ship, we're going to look at its strengths and weaknesses and hopefully that will allow you to make a decision on whether the Retriever is the barge for you. So as always the first thing we're going to do is click show info on the ship. Um, now the first thing you're going to notice is that my ship is uninsured, yours shouldn't be. Once you upgrade to a mining barge, there's a much larger risk that you're going to be suicide ganked. These are players who will fit out high damage, cheap destroyers, like under 2 million isk worth of destroyer. They will then target mining barges, freighters, anything that's an easy target that's going to be worth more than their ship in order to either loot it and make a profit or to just get a bigger kill on their kill board than their loss. A lot of the time they just do it for fun. This is That's their idea of fun. So. Just a, one of the ways you can kind of help mitigate that loss is to have your ship insured at all times. The only reason I don't have this one is I bought it purely for the purposes of making this video. Okay, let's have a look at the requirements tab. If you're upgrading to a mining barge or you're thinking of upgrading to a mining barge, then you've already had a look at these. So I'm not going to go into them with the same depth as I did with the venture tutorial. But these are all skills. I mean, with astrogeology especially, you don't just want to get this to level 3. You know, get it to level 4, aim maybe to get it to level 5 at some point in your career, but this 5% yield really Really gonna you know it's gonna increase the amount of this that you make per hour so it, it's treat these skills as a guideline not as like that's all you need having a look at traits now for every level of mining barge you'll get a five percent bonus to your ship or hold capacity and a two percent reduction in strip miner and ice harvester duration what this means is your strip miners as a base take 180 seconds to complete one cycle uh, with this level five you get 10 percent reduction which will reduce your cycle time to 162. That 18 seconds might not seem like a lot but if you intend to spend a lot of time mining and mining is going to be the way that you make your risk for the, for the foreseeable future, then that 18 second reduction really is going to make a difference. You're going to make more risk. Quickly looking at the attributes tab now, we can see that the ore hold on the retriever is 27 and a half thousand M3. Now, the retriever in my mind is the middle of the road mining barge. It has the largest ore hold, middle yield, and middle tank. This is the retreat. This is the mining barge that you want if you're going to be solo mining in high sec. The main benefit is that you can fit a decent tank on it. Your yield is still pretty good, and the ore hold size means that you don't need to go back to the station as often. So if you're on your own and you don't have orca support or porpoise support, it basically means that every time you fill up, you're going to have to warp off, go back to the station, unload come back, set up again, start mining, and all this eats into your profit margins. So with the barges with smaller ore hold capacity, they have to do these trips much more often than you're going to have to do with a retriever. You can see there that the base at the base value is 22,000 M3. I have mining barges level 5, so I've managed to get 27,500 M3. We've also got a drone bay that can now equip 5 drones rather than the Ventures 2, and we can launch 5 of those small drones. Right, let's go into the fitting and see exactly how you would fit one of these out. So I've got two fittings to show you today. So the first one I'm going to show you is a hull tanked vessel. We'll take a look at the strengths and weaknesses of this fit. Uh, so just as always with all my fits, before I go into this, to save me saying it every time, if you can't use the tech 2 variety or something, use the tech 1, but have a look at the skill requirements for the tech 2 and aim to get those as soon as possible. Because you're flying something like a barge now, you don't just want to fit it with rubbish modules. You're flying something that's a bit more expensive, it's going to be your primary means of income if you've gone this far down the skill on with it you're gonna want to you know you want to pimp it out you want to be able to use decent modules that are going to increase your yield your tank etc so in the high slots i've got two modulated strip miner twos you can use the tech one varieties but the main difference between the tech ones and the tech twos is that the tech twos require crystals and crystals work as a kind of ammunition for the tech two mining lasers what these mean is without crystals the tech one variety are better than the tech two variety but once you equip crystals to the the strip miner twos their yield is a lot higher than the base strip miner one these mining crystals are also ore specific so i've got veldspar mining crystals equipped as an example that means that if I fire, I can fire these lasers at Scordite or Plagio or Pyro and I'll still get some yield. 
but it'll be nowhere near the yield I would get if I tar just targeted Veldspar. These crystals aren't particularly heavy, so you can carry lots of different types. You can carry, it, uh, you know, four or five crystals for each ore that's actually, you know, in the system in which you're mining. It allows you to target the ores that you know are the most valuable first and then work down the list. The thing to remember about these crystals as well is that they're not used every time you fire your laser. Instead, they accrue damage over time. It takes quite a while for them to burn out, but eventually they will shatter and you'll need to replace them. They're not terribly expensive, and in my opinion, the extra yield that you get with them far outweighs the cost of the crystals. Now, you can use the Tech 1 variety of these crystals. The requirements are reprocessing to 4 and Veldspar processing to 3, or the equivalent ore skill to 3. That's for the Tech 1s. The only difference between the Tech 1s and the Tech 2s is that you need the processing skill to 4, uh, and the Tech 2s obviously have a greater yield than the Tech 1s provide. So that's a whole new bunch of skills that you're going to need to train, but the yield benefit's worth it. Having a look at the middle slots once again, we've got the Survey Scanner 2. One of the most powerful weapons in a miner's arsenal is the Survey Scanner. You arrive in the belt, you pop this off, and it displays a window with all the different types of ore within 22 kilometers of you. Not only does this allow you to target the most expensive ores first, it also shows you how much ore in M3 is left in the asteroids that you're mining. This means that if there's a rival mining barge in the asteroid field with you, he might be targeting two dense Veldspar asteroids that only have 500 M3 left in them, right? And he's going to take 180 seconds to find out that there was only 500 M3 in each of them. Whereas you're able to target the, the, the expensive asteroids that have 10,000 M3 in them and you don't waste a cycle. It gives you a huge advantage. It allows you to be much more efficient while you're actually mining in the belts. It, it's, you know, it's, it's gonna let you make more money. So it, it's worth using it in the only mid slot on this ship. In the lows now, we've got a damage control two. This is the first module in our tank. Uh, the damage control, as you can see with the numbers on the screen, increases your resistance profile across the board. Uh, so for shields, it's 12.5%, armor 15 and for hull, it's a massive 40%. Now, this is the first and most crucial item in our hull tank. So we also have two mining laser upgrade 2s. These increase the yield of your mining lasers at the expense that they cause the strip miners to use more CPU. But you can see with this fit, we've got a lot of room in our CPU, so that's not a huge problem, and they do increase the yield by, by quite a bit. In the rig slots now, I have put in three medium transverse bulkheads. What these do is just increase the raw hit points of your hull at the expense of cargo capacity. We don't need to worry about this because all we're going to have in our cargo bay is mining crystals. This doesn't affect the size of your ore hold. Because this vessel doesn't have a lot of slots, if I'd equipped an armor tank on it, we wouldn't have got the same yield because we wouldn't have been able to have the mining laser upgrades. Putting a shield mod in the middle would not really have made much of a difference if something was going to suicide gank us. So what I've done is hull tank it. You can see here that with the damage control 2 we've got 60% damage resistance across the board on the hull and then we've just increased the raw hit points of your hull right there. With my skills this fits pulling in about 2900 M3 every 162 seconds. A fairly good yield, we've got a decent amount of HP. This has given us a fairly decent amount of HP with my, with my skills. This isn't going to hang long in a fight, but it might last long enough for Concord to save you if a suicide ganker decides to, to have a go at you. So having a look at the drone bay now, you might be asking yourself why I'm not using mining drones. The reason for that is that re the retriever has no bonus to mine and drone yield. The yield that you're going to get from them is pretty small when weighed against the benefits of having these combat drones in your drone bay. As I'm sure you're aware if you spent any time in a venture in asteroid fields there are NPC pirates that are going to attack you randomly. If you don't have combat drones you're going to have to turn off your lasers, warp back to the station, repair your shields, find another asteroid field where there are no NPC pirates and then eventually more will turn up there and you'll just have to keep rinsing and repeating. That's so inefficient. So the yield loss from not having mining drones and instead having combat drones, I would actually say you're losing yield by having the mining drones because you'll have to reposition yourself a lot more. With these, you launch them when you land. When NPC pirates arrive on the scene and start shooting at you, these will automatically peel off and kill them for you. These will also do more damage to a suicide ganker if they decide to just attack you. So even if you do lose your mining barge, you will still get on the kill mill. So that's one small advantage as well. Okay, so that's the hull tanked variety. So taking a look at the second fit now, you can see that the high slots and the middle slots are exactly the same. The only changes I've made in the low slots is I've whipped off the damage control 2 and I've equipped a mining laser upgrade 2. This has reduced our tank drastically because we don't have resistance profiles across the board like we're a lot weaker. This ship will not survive a suicide gank. The payoff 
for that is that you can see that our yield's been increased from 2,900 to around 3,200 every 162 seconds. That's a 300 M3 boost every 162 seconds. Now, to fit some tank on this thing, what I've done is I've put a medium core defense field extender. This increases the raw hit points of your shields at the expense that you're slightly easier to hit. Then we've got an anti -e thermal screen reinforcer increases the thermal resistance of your shields and an anti-EM screen reinforcer which increases the EM resistance of your shields. Now in the drone bay again I've got Hobgoblin 2s for the exact same reason as the hull tank fit. Now this fit gets you a slightly higher yield but in my humble opinion that extra 300 M3 every 162 seconds is not worth the reduction in tank. I wanted to show you this one just so that if this is if you think that 300 M3 is worth it go for it that's you know we've, we've all got different opinions when it comes to ship fitting so I thought I'd show you both but for me personally I'd rather have a little bit more security and knowing that I'm gonna get my ore back to the station than being popped almost immediately because I've got no tank so that is it for my retriever overview video just to quickly summarize the Retriever is the middle of the road mining barge. It's ideal for the soloist, highest ore hold size, middle of the road yield, middle, middle of the road tank. This is personally the ship that I would use if I was going to mine solo in high sec, simply because I won't have to warp back and forth to the station all the time. I've been Garter Snipe for Garter Snipe Gaming. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, give it a like. Please subscribe for more EVE related content. That's how I know that you guys want to see more of it. If you've got any questions or you feel I didn't cover anything fully, please ask them in the comment below. I do check every day and I'll do my very best to answer them fully for you.